I'm Annika Ellison. I'm from the Kent Fellows Mentoring Program. And this is my poem, Cracks in the Basement Cement Foundation of Your Church. In a world of logic, religion is a hot-tempered, middle-class, beefed-up, buzz-cut, sandals with socks, philosophy major on meth. His mouth is too big for his ideas, his ideas are too big for his actual merit, and his merit is small enough to go in one ear and out the other. He condemns the contradictory and the curious with no mercy, no kindness, and a double-barreled shotgun. He forgot to take that ethics class, you see. His mom wrote his resume, his dad is paying for his education, and he thinks he can see the future. He thinks he knows what's to come, but he's unprepared for the battle of science versus make-believe. He's dropping out of college in the third year. He says it's because no one can keep up with his massive intellect and his incredibly modern ideas. He forgets, of course, that he bases all of his ideas on things that thousands before him have said. He also forgets that his way of life is only possible because of the amazing women, people of color, transgender people, people of differing sizes, classes, shapes, and sexualities. Because he knows that everything good in this world was made by white, middle to upper class, straight, cisgender men. He's set in his ways. He doesn't ever change, except for when he does. But it's not his fault he's grown up an abusive, hypocritical, manipulative person. He was raised by a father who had all of those traits, and father hated him, and mother feared father. It was okay, though. They both believed in good traditional family values. He was used. He was abused. And he is afraid. And that's really the reason he sucks at life. He's terror given body and breath. He's so afraid of death. He's frozen for fear, so he's created a fantasy for himself that says he's never alone. He's always going to exist, and if he does things just right, follows all of his ridiculous rules, he gets an eternal reward, or at least a better life next time. These rules simply serve to allow him to hate others with impunity, despite that being against his rules. He loves his rules, though, and adores the ideas of his rewards. He's unhappy anyway, because doubt has his filthy fingers in his ears, so he thinks that fear is hope, struggle is deserved, and pain is love. He lies, endlessly and relentlessly, to protect his doubt-deaf mind. I, a voice of logic and reason, don't have to defend myself. I know that doubt is natural, but our dear friend religion is not. I hate him only a little. Mostly I pity him because his world is so small and he is so scared. I am sick and tired of fearing an entity so hateful, manipulative, and violent. Are you like me? Are you ready to be unafraid? <laughs>